Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Oh, there he is. The trainee. I'm just trying to pull up the video here. I don't know, is anybody else getting an error occurred when they try and like look at videos on YouTube? It seems to be happening to me all the time on like every device that I use. Have you gotten that where it shows like, it shows like, um, like pixelation, like a little, like, like the old white and black ants kind of thing. And it says an, an error occurred. No, no, I don't get that ever. Crazy. It's been happening. It might, like maybe it's my, my Wi-Fi or something, but I'm getting on my phone, my iPad. Anyway, um, I am in, I'm in the chat. I'm going to, I'm going to, a every, everybody, bing. There we are. Hey, everybody. Uh, Trenny and C here tonight. Um, and we have uh, a fun one, or at least it's going to be fun for us. And mostly fun for you, actually, Trenny. It really is. I am the one that has all these delicious uh, samples here. So that's pretty exciting. So our boy, and he's going to need to leave a comment in the comment section in order for us to see him here. But our boy, Jordy Mosky sent yep. us a whole bunch of the Aaron malt samples and uh, we wanted to taste them tonight with all of you guys and with Jordy on the line. He was going to uh, be in the comment section there and he was going to have a message from Jordy that says, good evening guys, which dram pool are we starting with? Oh, he's there. There he is. He says, I'm here. Okay. There's, there's our boy. Let's, let's give him a, uh, Let's give him a uh, Twitter shout out so that people can people can hit him up. He's on Twitter at Jordy Mosky, so you can go the at symbol G E O R D I E M O S K I. Actually, I'll just put it in the comment section because that's just easier. So if you want to follow Jordy. Uh, we were lucky enough to meet him this year at the uh, at the Victoria Whiskey Fest. So, super dude. So, follow him on Twitter. And he's always got some good whiskey knowledge to pass along. And from what I can tell, he's got quite the... I don't know if, you, if he's got a collection or if he's just got... Um, a shitload of whiskey. Well, we definitely know he has a bunch of opened bottles because these are all samples. So if these are samples from, like, this is six really, really good looking samples here. I mean, I won't give too much away, but some of them are, like, really, really crazy. So one um, story that Jordy wanted me to, to mention was that we went at the Victoria Whiskey Festival. He comes up and he's like, hey... I'm Jordy Mosky, and we're like, oh, hey, Trenny and C, and, um, and then he's like, have you seen Aaron? And I was like, Aaron who? <laughs> and he just started cracking up, and I was like, what's fun? Like, I don't get the joke. I thought he was talking about a person named Aaron, so he, I guess that stuck with him. He thought that was pretty funny. That was like accidental, Accidental whiskey humor, but I actually didn't. I thought he was talking about a person named Aaron. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like it. Well, I remember like there's a guy I know that he was at a, a fair with his buddy Stefan, and a guy that was super drunk came up to him was like, "You Stefan?" He's like, "Yeah, I'm Stefan." So like, "You Stefan?" <laughs> They're like trying to push him. Like, "What's the deal?" Yeah, I'm Stefan. <laughs> anyway, it was pretty funny. Do people still say, are you stepping? Is that a thing? I don't think so. This was like in like the late 90s probably. Good times. Good times. Yeah. Um, so again, Jordy sent us a plethora of samples of really awesome samples. But you, my friend, Trenny, today you have the luxury of having all the samples. I was lucky enough to have all the Peter White samples at my house, but you have all the Jordy Mosky samples at your place. So why don't you... um? Walk us through those samples and then uh, and then start. start yeah, well, what do you have there? You have the Aaron Malt 14 and that's all? Or do you have the other one left there too? I think the Amarone is at your house. So I, I'll be drinking the 14 tonight. Okay, you, cool. 
you can get started because we did have some some technical difficulties and I have to throw uh, I have to throw a, a burger on the barbecue for the old wife here. She's gonna have a little little dinner, so I'm gonna I'm gonna run back and forth while you do the first sample, and I'll try and get this burger made up real quick. All right, okay. Well, well, husband, yeah. Husbandly duties to do, you know. Of course, of course. Okay, well, I will get started with uh, Jordy here. Um, Jordy, the way I've kind of lined this up for now is uh, I've done it with the lowest percentage to the highest percentage, which actually turns out relatively well because I'm just I've smelled between them a little bit without going into too much detail. But I did notice the last sample at 58.2% alcohol is actually slightly peated. So it kind of hopefully makes sense. Um, there's this one in the middle here that I don't know if we're doing it a disservice being in the middle because it is Sherry Cask 1968. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's amazing. And this is, uh, we'll, we'll get into that one. Maybe Jordy can uh, talk us through that one a little bit because I don't have a ton of information about these bottles, but man, what amazing samples these are. I'm going to just look in the comment section um, and see what we got here. I'm going to just do a quick couple shout outs first. We've got Loch Ness, we've got Carl T, we got Killa Jolt, we got Z, we got Richie Z, Moose, Moose Chun, Christine Deems, uh, did I say William D Davilar? I might be saying that wrong. Um, obviously, Jordy, uh, Brock McNichols, um, Scene Score 12, Carl T, I might have said that already. Uh, yeah, we've got some good ones. DJ Beacon. Juan Quintanilla, sorry if I got that wrong, Jason Coates, Jim G. We got the crowd here tonight. That's awesome. <clears throat> so as C is uh, cooking a burger for his wife, we're going to start, I think, Jordy, if you're down with this one. if you, I don't know, if Jordy, if you have all the Aaron malts lined up in front of you right now as well, but um, this is the order we're going. First one is the Aaron Malt 18 year old. So that has some age on it and it's 46% alcohol. So if you guys uh, have anything similar or if you have that malt, feel free to dig your nose into it right now. And I, I think I see C on the other end of this camera here. Yeah, I'm back. I just threw some burgers on and I'm uh, gonna pour myself an Aaron Malt. Hey, um, just a quick question. Where the hell are my glasses? That's not the question. Um, a quick question. Have we shouted out all the people that are on? I just did, yeah. I just oh, went okay. through the whole list and shouted out everybody. And I apologize again if I get some of your names wrong sometimes. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so I am starting, like I said before you got here, I'm starting with the Aaron Malt, 18-year-old, 46%. Um, I, I've given this one a half decent nose and man, the age shows up and works really, really well with this right away. In fact, as I've nosed through some of these, it's made me a bigger fan of Aaron because I was kind of on the fence with some of their, their products before, but now that smelling through these, the range that they have is actually pretty incredible, but yet they also seem to have something very signature and specific about their nose. This one is quite, Fruity, like really orchard fruit, a little bit of toffee, little bits of caramel. It's, it's, excuse me, it's a sweet nose. It's, it's just seems really fresh and not fresh in the sense like that it's young because obviously it's 18 years old, but fresh as in like it's quite, it almost seems like a springtime kind of a malt. It's not too heavy. It's not too, uh, there's not so much going on in it that it, it turns you off on drinking something like this on a hot day like today. Hey, it turns out we missed Chris Beaton. So, hey, music man, Chris Beaton. Oh, there we go. So, do you think that, um, let me just, sorry to say, Jordan so Mosky says the 18 year old has been temporarily discontinued due to stock levels. So, that's even better for me. <laughs> So has, I guess, um, 
has Jordy weighed in on his, the, does he have a passion or do you have a passion for the Aaron malt or you, you just happen to like have so much whiskey that you have six or eight bottles of every different kind or are you like an Aaron enthusiast? So let us, let us know in the yeah. comments. Let there. us know because uh, six bottles of really any distillery is like a luxury to have. That's for sure. So, um, and the Aaron seems well around where we're from is pretty hard to find actually. So pretty yeah, they don't, they don't carry a lot of different variations of it around here. You know what? I'm going to actually name all of them instead of making people wait for what they are, just so you, you know, in advance and you can maybe get excited about which one I'm going to try. You already know the 18 year old Aaron malt. The second one here is the 21st anniversary edition. Um, 5,988 bottles. It's 52.6% alcohol. <clears throat> this one in the middle, again, hopefully it's not doing a disservice to being in the middle, but this is the Aaron Malt Sherry Cask 1968. 58 of 263 bottles. This one is bottled at 53.9% alcohol. That's pretty incredible. And then the fourth in the lineup tonight, is uh, Master of Distilling, James McTaggart, 10 year old, uh, uh, 12,000 bottles, 54.2% alcohol. Uh, fifth in the lineup tonight is the Boffy Quarter Cask, Batch One, uh, 2015, 12,000 bottles, 55.7% alcohol. Um, and the last but not least, this one's the, and I might be pronouncing this wrong, but Machri Moore. Uh, cask strength second edition 9,000 bottles 58.2 percent this one um, I noticed on the nose when I was nosing it earlier that it has a little bit of peat influence there um, now Jordy if there's anything I should switch around here in the lineup let me know I'm just going kind of lower percentage to higher percentage let's see if there's anything here what are you looking up right now sorry he says some call it an obsession. <laughs> um, oh, Jordy Mosky says, not sure if you guys caught my advent calendar. I seem to remember that actually. Oh, cast number, not year. Wait, on the 1968? Well, if that's the case, then... Uh, that makes a lot more sense that you're giving out a 1968, uh, that you're not giving out 1968 sample. Okay, I'm gonna do a quick little run through of the nose on this one more time. Like I said, lots of nice toffees, a little bit musty dusty, kind of like sweet red apple, little bits of honey and toffee, slightly um, uh, honeysuckle. It's got a really, really nice nose and the age the age works on it quite well too. Oh, and Jordi Mosky says, the distillery only opened in 1995. Well, that explains everything. Yeah, you know what the ones are that they have here locally is the Amarone, the Saturnas and the, I can never say that right either. And the, um, and the pork cask finish, those three different finishes, those are the ones that you can get around here um, pretty readily. But, um, and then even the 14 is hard to find beyond that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna just go on to the nose now. I haven't even tasted these yet, but I, I kind of want to go through the nose on some of these first. Um, this is now the 21st edition, um, 5,988 bottles, 52.6% alcohol. Now this you're making, you're making sure to save some for me, right? Yeah, I might save a little. <laughs> I'll trade. I'll Depends trade on how much of the, um, Peter White. Yeah. You have left. Yeah. I'll trade you straight up. <laughs> okay. This one now, similar nose. This one's a little bit, <clears throat> a little bit more, it almost smells a little bit more syrupy. Let me go between the two here. 
Yeah. This one has a little bit of a darker, richer fruit kind of a smell to it. Definitely has some floral notes. Almost a slight kind of um, nuttiness in the background. Okay. Well, while you're um, while you're doing that, I gotta make a big announcement. Oh shit! Okay, go ahead. Huge announcement. Huge announcement. If you stick around long enough tonight, you will get to see the unboxing of the brand new coins. The coins showed up finally in the mail tonight. I went and picked them up at the mailbox. They have not even been opened yet. So we're ready. And I've been getting emails from people being like, where the hell is my coin? I prepaid for a coin in like February or whenever <laughs> that was. And um, so, yeah, so we're going to open them up. And like, I'll start, I'm going to be starting to ship these things tomorrow. I'm going to be chucking them in envelopes, mailing packages out. I've been doing a lot of mailing packages out lately. Um, That's great. We're, we're getting really caught up on all of our, uh, our backlog of things to send out. My, my biggest difficulty in life these days is finding um, cardboard boxes that are like the right size for samples where it's like, it's not too loose. It's, you know, it's not too big. You know, if I send a big package, I got to pay more for it. Right. So I'm like, I'm trying to get like little sample packages and like, packages that are just right to send a bottle in and shit like that's that's my life struggle right now is just cardboard boxes and and packaging well it sounds like a lot of comments are uh, saying that your next struggle will be that you're letting your burgers burn right now oh shit <laughs> okay so um now that we got rid of him uh what one was i on i can't even remember i think i'm going over to the aptly mistitled and kind of misleading sherry cast 1968 but hey it's my own damn fault for not knowing the distillery hasn't been around that long i i don't know that much we don't know that much about the Aaron malt honestly whoa big sherry notes on there that's almost reminiscent of uh when cavalan does sherry it's just like super in your face really fruity a nice um, wood resin note to this one. There's a, there's a little bit of char on there. Some kind of pepper notes, but the, the sherry cask influence is huge. Really fruity. Almost kind of... Hold on. Like blueberry-ish. Like, like rich, darker fruits. Really juicy. Mmm. Man, that one's going to be a pleasure to taste. I like the smell of that one. <coughs> so the the good news is I had the barbecue super low, and the wife's having turkey burgers tonight. So, you know, it takes a little longer to cook through that. So thanks, everybody. Um, if you could tip me off in about three, four minutes, I should go check again. Thanks. <laughs> um, also, SPAD, at SPAD, which I don't recognize that name, actually, do you? SPAD? Spad? Nah, not as a, no, not as a, no. <laughs> so he's mentioning tequila right now, and he's wondering if we're into tequila at all. And it's funny you should mention it, Spad, because we had a discussion with uh, one of my friends who, who plays in the band listening party that I play in, um, and he's loving tequila these days, and I can, I definitely can get behind some of these different offerings of tequila, especially like the smoky kind of mezcal versions. But C was kind of mentioning that he had an off-putting, probably like in his late teens kind of a thing. Yeah, so like when I was, so my parents went away at some point, I think I was probably like 19 or 20. And um, and they, the only thing that was left in the house for alcohol was like a 40 pounder of, um, of like Jose Cuervo. And so I dragged that around with me for a night or two and uh, thinking just like straight Cuervo for a night or two. I just, I remember falling in a ditch and there was some passing out and it was like ever since then. Yeah. I, I have a hard time with uh, anything tequila or mezcal. It's just like, it's one of those poisonous scents that's just thrown me off. And and then I tried to get back into tequila after that as a as a grown-up. I went to Mexico and I bought 
I think it was called, um, I don't know, Tequila Azul or something. And it was like in this like white and blue kind of like porcelain tall thin jar and it was like really nice looking and it was like supposedly expensive or whatever and I brought it back from Mexico and I opened it up and I took the first sip and I was like this <laughs> I spat it across the room and it was like since then I was like no I'm, I'm not doing this <laughs> and your buddies polished it that night oh my other buddies like crushed it they thought it was fantastic and I just I just couldn't do it so I uh I'm gonna apologize in advance this shirt's like <laughs> Tight on me! Holy shit! It's like a size medium. I'm what is your what are your chest measurements? I don't know. They're just huge. It's huge. <laughs> you, have, you have a very large chest. Yeah, it's I like built like a triangle, kind of <laughs> upside down triangle. Anyways, ah, I'm just trying to promote this uh, band here. Can you get a different size? <laughs> I have to go downstairs. <laughs> I look fucking jacked in the shirt. Where did you put Greg Lynn's medium on? Probably, yeah. Actually, keep talking. I'm gonna go change this. Okay, shirt. I'm out of tequila stories, but um, oh god, let's see what people have to say about that shirt. That's okay. I want to see these comments. <laughs> DJ Vicky, you look like a sausage. Oh, whiskey quests pop it in just before bed. Uh yeah, Jose Cuervo ruined tequila for him too. Um, spanks Christine deems <laughs> yes, sucking everything in. There's like a Lulu lemon shirt, Trenny, <laughs> making you look good. <laughs> um, a sweet form, Trenny. Yeah, okay, that's good. Jordy Mosky's probably like, oh, is this what I signed up for? Yes, this is the kind of show we run here. Um, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Um, man, I think I got to go check on those burgers, but he's not back yet. So either. either okay, I'm back. I'm back. Okay. I'm going to run and check on my burgers now. Like what kind of fucking show is this that we're running here? You're cooking burgers. This is like a cooking show and promoting band show. You're, yeah. you're wearing Spanx as Christine Deem said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Except if I, it would just like pour out just <laughs> everywhere. Um, anyway. This shirt's a little bit more wrinkled, but it fits better. Don't you guys agree? <laughs> Which one was I on, on now? I'm getting all distracted here. I think think I'm on the Bothy Quarter Cats one. No, I think I'm on this one. Okay, yeah. So this is the master distiller, James McTaggart, 10-year-old. Definitely has a little bit more youth to this one. Really nice still. A little bit of a wood char on there. Some honeysuckle. A little bit of <laughs> that um, almost like a bubblegum rye kind of thing on the nose, which is interesting for a single malt. Really liking that. That's good. Okay, moving on again to the Bothy Quarter Cast, batch one. <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm, this one has kind of a, no, it has a little bit less of a, for, for me, it might be my least favorite in the lineup for nose. Seems like there's less going on in this uh, Bothy quarter cask. Still very pleasant, nice and sweet, a little bit young smelling. Obviously, it's bottled at 55.7%, uh, so it's high up there, but really nice. Highly drinkable, I'm sure. Last but not least, the Aaron Malt Macrimore. <laughs> Is that like macrame? Macrimore? Michael Moore? Uh, cask Strength 2nd Edition. Uh, so this one. Woo, now, that's got a little bit of iodine. Nice, the, the characteristics of the sweetness and the, the orchard fruit and the floral, just with a hint of peat. Nothing too, too overwhelming in the peat department, but it's definitely there. And it's kind of convenient that this is the highest strength and the last on the lineup here because we tend to save our peated whiskeys for the end of the night or the end of the, the like master class or whatever. 
But there's some interesting kind of notes going on in this, Pete. It's a little bit more uh, dirty, a little bit more earthy. Hmm. But the honeysuckles there, the sweetness. It's a, a, kind of like a barnyard grass smell going on. Really quite nice, actually. Okay. So I'm going to just check comments. Andrew Spurl, yeah, got to show off the merch, of course. <coughs> um, let's see. Oh, Moose Chun. M Moose Chun says Warehouse 1969. Yeah, that makes more sense. Um, I don't know if we've said hello to Whiskey Explorer, but hello. Um, what else we got here? 20 parts per million on the Macro More, uh, says Jordy Mosky. So that's that's pretty significant. <laughs> Killer Joel says Macklemore, the rapper. That's the Macro More. Um, most chuns just working on a dram of Balcones Texas single malt. Interesting. We'd really like to try some Balcones. Because uh, we don't really get it around here. Yeah, C's just fixing up some burgers. Cool. Okay. Well, I'm going to, if you guys didn't hear, I don't know how many people we have watching right now. Okay, 32, not bad. But uh, if you stick around, we have finally received the uh the new trending c coins which is really cool because as i'm sure you guys probably know by now they're a little bit more unique and if you don't know why then i'm, I'm not going to say anything you can just stick around and find out why they're more unique than most of these other kind of challenge coins these challenge coins that do nothing for nobody um why is this burger look at this whoa that's a good burger yeah it's going to go great with my Aaron 14. Oh, totally. Sorry, you were talking about um, terrible challenge coins? Well, I, I was just saying that the, for people who don't know, we, I won't give away the, uh, what our challenge coin is about right yet, in case you don't know. But uh, it actually does something. It doesn't just sit there covering your, your whiskey glass, um, which I think is hopefully unique and maybe people want to buy them. You know, I don't know. I think they're kind of cool. We think they're cool. Okay, I'm gonna try my, I haven't even had a sip of whiskey tonight so far, and what are we, like half an hour into this thing. So I'm gonna start with the Aaron 18 year old, 46%. I love the nose on this guy. This is one of my favorite noses out of all of them so far, actually. Which this, one is that? The, the Aaron 18 year old. It's just very simple, like lots of orchard fruit. Sweet honeysuckle. Yeah, nice. Okay, I'm gonna chase this. Mm. Soft arrival. Brightens up kind of mid palate. Some of that classic, uh, like scotch, the scotchiness really shows up. The wood sugars are there. It's, this one's kind of a chewer because it's quite um, rich and dense with the age of the cask in there. Really, really, really good. Wow. I'm liking that one quite a lot. T tell, tell us, are you slamming a burger right now or are you drinking some Aaron? Not uh, crush, crushing the burger, but Jordy Mosky says, um, move the single cask to number four or five for tasting. Single cask for number four. Which one's a single cask here? Uh, hmm. None of them say single cask. More information, Jordy, more information. The sherry cask, is that what you meant? No. Um. Hmm. 
Well, I guess the Sherry Cast one is 58 out of. You said the 1968. Move that one. Okay, yeah, because uh, yeah, that's one of 200 and some odd bottles. So four or five. I'll I'll go five. I'll have this as my my opener. Okay, cool. Closer right before the peak. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, Whiskey Explorer is giving out all of our secrets. Well, that's okay. Hey, Tim Dietrich, good to see you. Okay, I'm gonna move on slightly. I don't know if people, what, what is everyone drinking right now? Does anyone have some Aaron malts happening? <clears throat> Cause I'm moving on to the uh, 21st anniversary edition. Oh, I'm going back to this nose between the two. This one, the the eighteen year old's a little bit more grassy. This one has a little bit more, almost like it has a little bit of sherry in there. Really rounds off nicely. Okay, I'm gonna taste it. Mm. Damn, Jordy, that is some good Aaron Wall. Wow. 52.6%. It is mouth coating without burning anything. It's really, um, it's like kind of a soft arrival, really. Wow, that's good stuff. Mm. That might be my new favorite <laughs> out of the two. See, what are you doing? Can't talk, eating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised your loud crunching isn't like switching the screen back and forth. Okay, wow, that was really good. I'm gonna look at some comments here. Okay, we got Doug Chrisop is drinking a Cavalan. Good choice, those are amazing. Um, Christine Deem still working on Stag Jr. That's good stuff too. Jim G. Buna having 12. I almost feel like I haven't had that lately, and it's the one that I always kind of want to go back to, that Buna 12. Um, Joshua Leatherdale is doing Guterham and Wart's 11 Souls. That is like one of my favorite whiskeys of the year probably. Wow, that's good stuff. Isaac N4413 is a uh, good old Lefroy 10, of course. Um, Carl T drinking Compass Box, great King Artist blend, awesome. Um, Loch Ness agrees with us that the Buna 12 is amazing. Sterling Cole, Aber Aberfeldy 12. Oh, Richie Z is doing his infinity bottle of bourbon. Which, see, that's a good idea. We should start in a uh, bourbon infinity bottle. Yeah, we could. We definitely have um, a good selection. We do. Jordy Mosky was saying that the 21st anniversary is from barrels of their first three years in production. Wow. Very cool. They put out some good stuff right away. Uh, Sterling Cole, Highland Park, he's having after. Yeah, cool. Oh, drinking coffee, okay. Whiskey Quests, good night, my friend. We'll see you soon. Well, thank you again, like you guys. You guys join us when it's uh, 12 at night on the East Coast and it's only nine o'clock here, so we're pretty lucky to have all you guys watching. What do we got? We got 33 right now, that's amazing. Um, See, do you want to pitch in at all in this? Sure. Um, DJ Beacon switched from Glendronic 12 to Old Pulteney 12. Uh, uh, Chris Beaton, Elijah Craig, Andrew Spurl. Uh, he's having the bear face, which we had the other day. Don't get too bear faced. Yeah, we got super bear faced that night. Um, what else? Uh, Killa Jolt's having Glendronic 12. 
uh, William Devil Art uh, Eagle Rare 10. And uh, yeah, anyway, um, feel free to talk amongst yourselves about what you're drinking tonight. And uh, yeah, carry on, carry on with the with the notes, Trenny. Okay, so I've done the first two, both excellent. I'm really now loving. I liked the nose better of the 18, but the uh, the flavor and the taste and viscosity and everything on this 21 anniversary edition is awesome. Okay, moving on to the Bothy Quarter Cask, which is 55.7% alcohol. Um, okay, yeah, this one I remember. This one has a little bit of that kind of grassy, honeysuckle, barnyard smell to it. It's quite nice. Let's taste this. Mmm. You know, there's like some almost tropical kind of notes on there. There's like some of these remind me a little bit of Cavalan in a weird way. And uh, I really, as you guys probably know, C and I are huge Cavalan fans. We just can never afford to buy any of it because it's just ridiculously expensive. But, um, and I'm getting that some of those notes in the um, in the 14 that I have here. It's very kind of like, yeah, in a way, it's very like fruity and and sweet and and uh, and effervescent. It has a sizzle to yeah, it. It does have a sizzle for sure. What's the percentage on that one there? This one is. 46 this was a really good bottle because it um it was non-chill filtered natural color age statement and 46 percent so it checked all four of of the boxes that we like to talk about um it was just a little bit pricey i got the price i got that receipt right in this thing here dig it out and see what we what we bucked up for this thing this was one hundred eighteen ninety nine before tax, so one eighteen is going to be fifteen percent of that is going to be another eleven seventeen. It's going to be that's like one thirty five. That's just ridiculous. What? Fuck the fuck? Excuse Whoa. me. <laughs> so yeah, so it's about one hundred thirty five bucks for us to shell out. That's why. You know, like we don't do as much scotch on our channel as as we'd like to do because uh, you know we can buy two bourbons or four Canadian whiskey for that price, right? So you know, our channel would probably be a lot bigger if we did scotch all the time, but uh, I'd be bankrupt. <laughs> hey, I, I'm gonna respond to a couple things in here that aren't anything to do with the Aaron malt, but. Um, we did a video recently, uh, oh, where I just lost that comment. People are commenting too quickly. Oh, Chris Beaton and Killajolt are kind of talking about Legacy by Wisers. And uh, Chris, I guess, has two of them. Hold on to those. But if you guys want to learn how to make basically the exact pr proportions of how to make Legacy, check out our video. We have a video on how to make Legacy taught to us by none other than the real Dr. Don. So yeah, it's, it's, it's sure. called um, poor man's legacy or something. A poor man's JP, how to make poor man's JP Weiser's legacy. And it's like, there's two simple components. So if you watch the video, you'll, you'll see. And then, and then it's like, well, why would Dr. Don give away his recipe on how to make Weiser's legacy instead of just selling it? Well, because he can get you to buy two bottles to make one. <laughs> Yeah, it's not really poor man's version if you have to buy two. Yeah, it's actually like really twice as expensive man's version. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Let's see here. Sterling Cole says 75 bucks in Nova Scotia for this Aaron 14. Oh, man, we just get greased here. Um, let's see. And... Um, yeah, if you haven't had a chance to check it out, we've been doing a blending, uh, blending competition that's been going on between um, six channels, and uh, all the videos have been going out over the last over this week. I think they started on Monday, so it's uh, whiskey in the six, um, sipper social club, cast strength, whiskey whistle, 
um, malted Montreal and ourselves. So um, if you get a chance to watch that video series, and then we're all doing a live stream tomorrow night, which I think you're going to attend that on our behalf, right? It, oh, there's a chance I might not be able to. I might have to work till like 7.30. Oh, shit. Well, we might not be on the live stream tomorrow because I think it starts at 6 o'clock our time. So, um, yeah. So maybe some trendy, maybe not. Don't even watch it. <laughs> yeah. We'll let you know whether we're on. If we're not, don't watch it. Just yeah, yeah. watch old Trenny and C reruns. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to move on to number four here in my lineup. And this is uh, the master of distilling, James McTaggart. Ten-year-old, uh, 12,000 bottles, 54.2% alcohol. Can I just pause for a second there? Um, Kill Adult says, Trenny and C, was Rob pissed that you messed up the blind tasting? Well, everybody was busting our balls because – apparently we were supposed to taste them like they were blind because we didn't know what was in the blend that's what i thought the blind component was of the test was is that you don't know what's in it but i guess they wanted like me to pour yours for you and you to pour mine for me without knowing whose bottle we were tasting but like didn't really matter it's so, all blind we didn't know what was in them in the blends but so i make it more complicated than we have to yeah, exactly. exactly. We just wanted to drink. We didn't read the instructions. So, well, actually, rereading the instructions, I think people were kind of pissed because uh, our blend is uh, didn't follow in line with what everyone else kind of did. But yeah, but that, that was but, not in the rules, anyways. We did what we wanted. No, it was actually specifically in the rules that we were allowed to do what we did. Exactly. So, um, just so, because yeah. uh, all these other guys have a one track mind. That's, that's just it. Like expand your creativity. You yeah. Know? Expand your horizons. That's right. So anyway, <laughs> um, not just beat it. Maybe we just should it. We probably shouldn't show up for the live thing tomorrow because we're just going to get our ass ripped by those other guys. anyway. Yeah, that's true. They'll probably <laughs> rip our ass even more now that we're not showing up. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see. Hopefully you can make it, but okay. So, we got, uh, again, the master of distilling, James McTaggart, 10-year-old. Uh, I'm going to have a sip of this guy. And uh, just want to say goodnight to Loch Ness. Loch Ness is shutting her down. So um, thanks for popping in. I know it's late. Wow. This is also super delicious. It's really well-rounded. It kind of has this caramel apple kind of thing going on. It's really, like the texture, the viscosity of these is kind of what's blowing my mind with them right now. I feel like there's got these got to be non-chill filtered natural color because it leaves such a, like an oiliness in the mouth, which is like half of the reason these are good. Like this 10 year old, it does taste a little bit um, more, I don't want to say more woody, but a little bit less char and a little bit more um, bubblegum rye kind of a thing going on, but really, really, really well-rounded with the oiliness in the mouthfeel. Jordy Mosky says they're all heaven in a glass. <laughs> yeah. Delicious. I'm not even going to go into too much depth about that one. That was delicious. And you know what? I just had a sip, my first sip of the, um, the 14 here, and it like – it kind of took me to this like old Pulteney kind of place. Like it's a little bit, um, a little bit floral and soapy. And I remember uh, Roy, who the, he so Roy um, Aquavite named this Aaron fourteen his whiskey of the year, and he had named it the Shapeshifter. So maybe now that we're getting a little bit down, like about halfway on the bottle there, or uh, a third anyway. Um, maybe it's starting to take shape a little bit here. So for sure, we're, we're vocal old Pulteney fans and, you know, I did not really love this, um, Aaron 14 when we first got into it. Um, I kind of struggled with it a little bit at times, uh, but tonight it's, uh, pretty damn good. We're just having a good night tonight with our tasting. Maybe I, I know, um, we always talk about comparing and contrasting next to each other 
and how it's a, a really good education. But there's also a time when we have to like step, step back and respect a whiskey on its own merits without comparing it to other things. And if, if something's hitting you in that moment, it's a good whiskey. Nobody can tell you otherwise, really. Like some people have, um, have had those like heartfelt one-on-one -on -one moments with like a bottle of Jim Beam. And there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> so, and sometimes, like you kind of just mentioned there, sometimes you're just having a good night. Like sometimes, the whiskey goes down just so fast, and it's just so good. Like everything is just, it's just hitting. And some nights, you know, it's more of a struggle. And I think it can be just, it can be mood related, or maybe it's, maybe it can be climate related, or you know, whatever kind of you got on your mind, right? And tonight, uh, tonight they're tasting pretty good. Everything's tasting pretty good. Jason Coates said, I agree with that. My 14 needed a few weeks to open up, was really tight and bitter at first. Um, another thing I just want to say here, Richie Z has a question for us saying, your favorite whiskey, any type, going into the halfway point of 2019. I think we mentioned it a little bit earlier, but one of my faves this year has been the Guterham and Wartz 11 Souls. Like that one rocked my world big time and it's funny because previous years you wouldn't think a canadian whiskey would do it as often as it kind of has been lately some of these canadian whiskeys these days are phenomenally good especially when you kind of get it it takes a while to get it um well, one of mine um so far this year was this single barrel buffalo trace this was just awesome stuff um and Another one that I really enjoyed was the little book and also the um also the this, this Glenelaki has really um evolved as well. Like that's been a good bottle too. So I don't know, there's there's lots, right? Like <laughs> how do you how do you pick one, right? It's like it's hard to even pick one from each genre, you know. Um did, who won our Buffalo Trace single barrel, by the way? That was David Meyer. We I just shipped it yesterday with the Dram Club um, shipments, and he is in Virginia, I think. So, um, yeah, so that Buffalo Trace single barrel is heading back to its home in America, where it came from. So cool. it's kind of funny to think that it came from Kentucky, and then it came to Victoria, BC, and now it's going back to Virginia. Like, that's kind of crazy. The, the life of a whiskey bottle. I'd, I'd watch that movie. That's right. That's um, right. Killajolt says, yo, Trenny, dip my coin into that 11 souls so I can lick it when it comes and see if it's good for me too, okay? <laughs> <laughs> that, that can be arranged. Um, okay, I'm going to move on to my... Hey, Trey, yeah. remember the Whiskey Watch? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the Whiskey Watch had one, it was like a $12,000 watch, and it had like one, each watch had one drop of like 1932 Macallan in it or something like that. That's something ridiculous, and the watch was like so expensive. It was like, um, you taste the watch? You're like, what are you supposed to do with literally one drop of Macallan in your watch? Yeah, like, how, how does it benefit you being in a watch? Right, that doesn't make any fucking sense, and it's like twelve thousand dollars. Ridiculous. Okay, um, moving on. Aaron Malt, Sherry Cask, Warehouse, nineteen sixty-eight. Uh, fifty-eight of two hundred sixty-three bottles, fifty-three point nine percent. This nose on this guy. Oh. Man, this, again, I've brought up Cavalan a few times, but when Cavalan does a, a, a sherried whiskey, it's like unmistakably a sherry bomb. And this is a sherry bomb right here. Really sweet, like thick sweet. Jordy Mosky's telling you to take your time with this one. Yeah. Well, I, I've definitely, I've left these all open to the, the elements for a good 20 minutes here, or longer than that, almost an hour. <coughs> almost has some of those uh, like black currant, 
kind of things like that Alberta Premium Dark Horse. A little bit reminds me of some of those uh, like Stag Junior bourbons where it's, re where it's really, really fruity. Chris Beaton was, is asking, how do we ship bottles? Um, typically what we do is <clears throat> I use UPS and we learned, I think it was a trick that it might've been Jason Coates that taught us the old macaroni in the box trick. Was it Jason Coates? I think so. Yeah. That was, was. That was a idea. And um, it me in the macaroni and cheese for like a week. That's right. A little macaroni in the box, pack it up nice and. You know, you just, um, you know, you look at the time of year and it says, well, what's in the package? Well, right now, Mother's Day gifts. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> Previously, it was Easter gifts. <laughs> you know, like, okay, I'm going to have my first sip of this. Uh, look at the color on this guy. First wow. Sip with sherry cask. Jealous. Really, really good. Okay, here we go. Mmm. Damn. Again. Oh, whoa. The finish almost has like a, a tobacco kind of a thing going on. Like quite obviously tobacco. Like up front, it's very like a lot of them. Um, what do you call it? Like smooth and coating and quite easily drinkable, especially at higher percentage alcohol like this. But as soon as it kind of drifts over the back of your palate, it turns into like this kind of like uh, that grape pouch of tobacco kind of thing. I'm going to try this again. Like the red man chewing tobacco, like the full leaves. Yeah. Oh, wow. This one took me by surprise, actually. This, this is a delicious whiskey. Hmm, wow. I, I can't even go into too much detail on this one yet. It's kind of just blowing my mind. I might not have much left of this one for you, see. <laughs> <laughs> um, Trevor McKinvin. <laughs> Is that my long lost brother? Yeah, he's uh he's chiming in here. So he's from the Belle Province, Quebec, and he's just happy to be here having a little bit of Glenn Barkless. So I haven't seen that name before, so welcome. Uh, Trevor, or maybe you haven't haven't uh, noticed it before, but uh, welcome to the channel. Hopefully you're hopefully you're a uh, a subscriber, first time commenter, <laughs> <laughs> but long time subscriber, first time commenter. You know what? The Glenn Farkless Twelve that they're talking about right now is really effing good, like a real bang for your buck scotch, because like. We've been called a lot of names for um, when we did our seven hundred dollar scotch versus seventy dollar scotch comparison, and like people were like, "Wow, oh, you guys are idiots! You couldn't tell the difference, and all this kind of stuff." And it wasn't that we couldn't tell the difference between forty year old Glenn Farkless and twelve year old, but the twelve year old was really fucking good. That was we just picked it was the best one. So we tried that twelve year old Glenn Farkless against the forty year old Glenn Farkless, and twelve year old won. So. Well, honestly, like 40-year-old doesn't necessarily mean it's better. You know, like, yes, it's aged longer. Sometimes it can have too much of a wood influence. Don't get us wrong. The Glen Farkless 40-year-old is amazingly good whiskey. And as a standalone, it's phenomenal. But when you're trying it next to something that is, well, like, a, a quarter of the price or, or whatever that percentage is, like, way, way, way less, and you're not getting too much more out of it. Like, I, I was just as happy sipping that 12-year-old, you know? Yeah, like, the 40-year-old the, the is, like, 20 times as expensive. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not 20 times as good. That's, you know, so. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, you know, you're paying for um, exclusivity and an opportunity to taste something that not that many people will get to taste. And that's what you're paying for. Um, you're not paying for something that's, necessarily even better it's just rarer so um think about that when you're making those decisions we've had a lot of expensive whiskey that didn't really stack up as being the best like there's a lot of people that will tell you the pappy van winkles of the world you know there's better stuff for a hell of a lot cheaper it's just hype 
exclusivity, rarity, and demand in the marketplace. So, you know, um, consider that when you're when you're making your your big high price decisions, right? By the way, good night, Whiskey Explorer. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, again, Jordy, uh, Moski, this 19, Warehouse 1968 Sherry Cask is just blowing my socks off right now. I don't want to finish it. Just too good. Oh, wow. Um, just pour it back. Pour it back in the bottle. I'll take it. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna move on actually to the final dram of my uh, the Aaron malts. And again, thank you to Jordi Mosky for sending these to us. We really, really, really appreciate it, especially when we get to actually chat with you while we're drinking it, and maybe you're drinking along too. That is that makes it extra fun for us. So if anyone does send us uh, samples to do. We would love to like be able to maybe contact each other first and tell you that we're uh, going to be live and we can chat about it. That's really yeah. really fun. That that is the great thing about our our um, the the way that YouTube has done this, um, you know, live streaming and you know, and actually the with with us sending samples to people and people sending samples to us, like that's the really cool thing about being able to you know, validate what, um, you know, we put out the videos and we give our opinion, just our own opinion, but it's nice for people to validate what, what we think or invalidate it and say like, actually I had a totally different experience. So everybody's not going to taste them the same, but it is fun to do it at the same time or to literally try the same bottles as each other and be able to experience it. That's, I mean, it's just so like we never, if we didn't have a whiskey channel, we never would have been able to try anywhere near the amount of stuff that we've tried for sure for sure um okay i'm going to move on to this final jam here because i'm sure some people are itching to see those uh, coins i know i am okay this guy is clearly a peated whiskey this is the machio more cast strength second edition the color on this is quite light um and now going back to the smell compared to the sherry bomb here it is. It has like toffee and caramel, and like van vanilla bean ice cream, and all those sorts of things written all over it. A little bit of pepper notes, little bit uh, herbal in in places. The the iodine and um, peat notes aren't really really. They're very much like an underlying. They, they they're the back of the burner on this one a little bit. Which Sorry, is I'm going to be making some noise for a second here. Oh, for fuck. And anyway, so I'm going to actually taste this guy. Mmm. Soft arrival, but really big and bold peated notes. You get the peat way more on the flavor than you do the nose. It's really well rounded because it's nice and sweet. Um, but the peat has a little bit of heat to it, um, a little bit of like almost kind of chili flake flavor to it. Really nice. Um, I think the nose on this is like very, very solid. The flavor, really good, but again, 58.2% alcohol. That's a high percentage. Most of these are. But this one, it's definitely noticeable on the palate. I I love it when a, a really high strength whiskey evaporates on your tongue and it kind of just like <laughs> fills your head with smoke. No, it, remember it it redistills. Your mouth is basically it's vaporizing in your nasal passage, and then like <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Imagine you could actually do that and like turn this into like ninety eight percent alcohol. <laughs> okay. I'm going to try one more sip. While you're doing that, I'm going to address um, something that's going on in the comment section right now, which is we need more Drinko Plinko. And you know what? We put out a call for mini bottles and people answered. And it's been amazing. We have a ton of mini bottles now to use for our Drinko Plinko. But we just hadn't had the opportunity to do Drinko Plinko yet because 
it takes a bunch of setup. And then we were trying to mass produce videos leading up to Trenny going to Bali. And then of course you were in Bali for four or five weeks. And then we came back and we had to panic to get some more videos filmed um, when we hung out last weekend because we were out of videos. So it's like, we've been in this panic mode for like three or four months. Now that we filmed a bunch of videos at your place on the weekend, next time you come over here, we are going to focus on some Drinko Plinko. Um, and another thing was that Killa Jolt said, why don't you guys do a Drinko Plinko only with all the whiskeys to find a special blend instead of a mix? Also a great idea. So it could be like a three a three whiskey blend uh, based on what the Plinko board chooses. And, and I, I got a comment to uh, Jason Coates here because he says, I sent you nine mini, bo mini bottles. I demand the satisfaction. So <laughs> I think one thing we should mention ahead of time because we kind of fucked up and we put them all in the same spot. And so we're not exactly exactly sure who sent what. But, uh, yeah. We, we, well, D DJ Be Beacon sent us all of those um, bird dog flavored ones. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, you know what? Jason Coates, no, Jason Coates sent us these two. I got these two around. Oh yeah, that's great. He sent us the four roses and the um and the Willet, which is pretty awesome. Um, so we've got those ones too. And then uh, David Meyer sent us a whole shit ton of stuff too. So there's definitely been a few people that uh, that contributed. So we have we have a good stockpile. We'll make sure that every one of you gets a. Uh, a fuck yeah song uh for your drinko plinko we'll we'll figure it out we can probably go back maybe we have it recorded somewhere on a on your on your ipad or something who sent what but uh we might not be 100 percent accurate but we, we've got we've got an idea and i have like a bunch of mini bottles here that people sent uh yeah i don't know who sent them but what's that those are those are the blind samples no, no, I got like Cabin Fever and Knob Creek and Bushmills and... That was David Meyer, I think. Okay. Well, perfect. Thank you, David. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know if I've gone into enough detail on some of these, but I now I'm going to just be sipping these through the rest of the night, and I'm going to try to save my favorite for last. Um, so are, we, are we just moving on now? He did one right now because oh, right. it is not my favorite mm. and I know a lot of people just love their Pete so much so maybe we're the wrong people to be promoting Pete however this one is nice and light people I can't remember who said it earlier but they're interested to see how this compares to like an art bag or a Lafroig or whatever this is way lower on the scale of Pete especially on the nose one thing I do love about art bag is that there is like this underlying, like I wish Ardbeg would release a single malt that's not peated because I bet it would be fucking amazing. Um, so this, they're all really good. This is, for the huge peat heads out there, they're probably not going to get that big whack of satisfaction besides it being cast strength. So anyway, that's, that's my two cents. Okay, so are, are we moving into just the uh, the freestyle portion of the show now? Yeah, let's get those coins rolling. Oh, let's open the coins. All right. So a lot of people have already pre-ordered coins. A considerable portion of our stockpile of coins is already gone. Somebody busted our balls about being Canadian and said, why are you opening that, with a that box with a kitchen knife or whatever it was? It was like, well, we can use a bone hunting knife, a skinning knife. <laughs> so something a little bit more Canadian for uh, for today's unboxing. So these are from Combat Bet who makes, I think they make all the Whiskey Tubers coins. All right. What's the best way to do this? Okay. Cut. I got to cut right through the old shipping label here. Uh, 
cut away from myself. I don't need to bleed out on live YouTube. All right. Let's see what we have here. Ooh, they already look good. Okay, you ready, Trini? Oh yeah. Here's the bag, bag o' coins. Wow. Gonna get into this bag here a little bit. Oh wow, they're nice. Whoa, they're really nice. Okay, so they are double-sided. The front side has the red border with our Trying not to glare yet. Uh, maybe because they're in a little package here. Each one of these has its own little plastic package, I guess, to keep them pristine. Okay, so there's the the one side. It's It says, because this is a low-tech camera action here. It says, rye bourbon scotch Rye Bourbon Scotch Beer Reviews, Trenny and C. And then on the back it says, Small Batch Limited Release to 100, around the border there, on the blue side. And then it has the laser etched individual number. They're the same size as the Trenny and C coins, which, do we even have one? Oh, I do. They're supposed to be anyway. Yeah, so they actually fit exactly the same size as the um, the regular coins. So they're the same, they'll look basically same next to a, a regular coin size wise. And uh, plus the special feature of the bottle opener, the functional bottle opener. Amazing, that's like, that's easily the best part. Here's the thing is that I just looked in my fridge before when I had a sec and I don't have a beer bottle that needs like an opener, but I do have one that's a twist off, but <laughs> I might just have to try and open that one anyway. Yeah. We got to see that on camera for sure. So these are like zinc, zinc alloy or whatever they're called. So we should have a couple of them to clang them together and see what they sound like. What's, what's the weight situation? They're not too bad. Like I know we've, there's other people that have, metal coins and they're a little bit heavy. These ones are not too bad. So you can hear the metal action there. Okay, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna get a beer that doesn't need to be bottle opened, but I'm gonna bottle open it. All right, that's amazing. I'm so excited, I can't wait. Are we keeping number one and number uh, two again or whatever it was? Uh, presumably, yeah. Well. Or has somebody laid claim to number one? No, we're not selling number one. Okay. I'm not sure what the best way to do it if you just do it like normal. Okay, here's this just... Oh. This oh, yeah. Is not... this... oh it... there you go. Yes, it works perfectly <laughs> with very, very minimal effort. And that's that's a twist-off beer. So it had a little extra grip on there. So it didn't, didn't want to come off, but it took care of it easy. And you know what? The coin is... Still mint. The coin is not bent or like it's good quality. They're not like flimsy, shitty ones or anything. Now you have to drink that Sleeman. Yeah. So how cool is that? Hey, so this is the front and back side view at the same time. I love them. I love that one side's red and one side's blue. Yeah, that was kind of a last minute thing because I couldn't decide, if you remember, you were saying, hey, they look really good, but they look exactly the same as the old coins. And then I was like, oh shit, you're right. The blue on the front just makes it look identical to the original coin. And then, so I asked the guy to make them red. And then when I saw them red, I was like, oh, it's too much red. And then <laughs> I sent him like the third or fourth edit and I was like, how about red on one side and blue on the other? And he was like, ugh, okay. 
You're only supposed to get one edit. <laughs> but anyway, they are really shiny and nice. And this is like an enamel paint kind of thing. Like, they're really, really well done. Like, they did an awesome job with it. The, the people at Combat Bet do a really good job on the coins like everybody's coins look really good all the time so okay we're getting uh, some questions here uh jordy moss is asking if there's any left for sale yes we have some we've sold about 60 of them i guess yeah something like that like there's a there's a few left um but and, the the other question to that is how much and with shipping and everything it's just 20 dollars in exactly it's just a flat 20 bucks that includes shipping and everything um and so you just go to paypal and you make the recipient trennyc at gmail.com and you just send 20 bucks and put your address in there and we will ship one out to you we try and match the numbers up to what people want but there's already been so many like people have asked for specific numbers and where they're available we give them to people and if not um then you can tr keep trying to choose other ones or we can just send you a random number so <clears throat> if you're interested in a coin these are badass these are like these are the these are cool because they actually do something and it actually just works i, I was nervous i was nervous trendy like thinking i wonder if like the bottle opener function is going to be like shitty like how many bottle openers do you have that you're always like ah oh, fuck this thing's like like it's all no this was this was this came off real easy yeah, very cool. I'm excited about those. And yeah, like I said, they actually do something, which is cool. So, and I got a lot of envelopes to fill out um, starting tomorrow because there were people that were like, where the hell's my damn coin? And now that I've got them, it's like, oh, shit, now the work starts. I got to start shipping out coins. So if you already ordered a coin, you're in luck because they're pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Like I said, I think you mentioned it earlier, like, oh, here you go. Is it? It's it's not it's not the best whiskey hat to go on top of your glass because you're gonna lose a little bit of the uh, of the nose coming out there, but it does fit on there just fine. It's or maybe good. it's even better because it traps it in and you don't even have to lift it. You can just smell right through the hole. Oh, sniffing through the hole! It is better. It's <laughs> way better. <laughs> it's a sniff hole. It comes with oh. a sniff hole. It's a trending C patented sniff hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you just thought of something. That's brilliant. The sniff hole. I've got the sniff holes. <laughs> A real case of the sniff holes. <laughs> but like, I mean, it is pretty heavy when you have a bag of 100. They are limited to 100. We're never going to do more than 100. Trenny and C are going to have the most exclusive coins <laughs> in circulation because we're never going to do more than 100. I think that's a good number. I think so. I wonder. Uh, and we also use these for contests too, right? Like we'll <clears throat> we'll do some giveaways. The old coins are also numbered to one hundred, so they're out. So if you bought an old coin, um, if you want to be involved in contests and stuff, you gotta buy a new coin. The old the old coins are now relics of the past, antiquity, antiquity. I don't know. Antiquity. Well, it's like it's just like updating your. Uh, your settings on your phone. You just get some decent upgrades there or something. I don't know. That's but it's, right. It's not even like that at all, really. No, but it's like a it's like a whiskey, you know? You they do a batch for a while, out with the old, in with the new, and you know what? You might have loved the old one, but it's gone. <laughs> yeah. So but the other thing is you get to keep it. It's not like it goes out of, you know, like it's not like it's gone once you're done it or something. It's it's gonna be around. So I can't wait till somebody has like a necklace of just all the training C coins. <laughs> somebody was, there was an article, one of the whiskey bloggers, um, I laddie did an article about the whiskey coins and the collectability of the whiskey coins. It's like kind of funny to think that something that we just made like as a hobby is like potentially collectible someday. Oh, I got to say something. DJ Beacon says next will be the shocker. Both holes. <laughs> well, you've always got to be advancing, right? You can't, you can't just you know rest with what you've got. So yeah, we want to make it a double, a double hole. The trending yeah, double yeah, knot. foreplay with this this stuff, right? Oh fuck, that's funny. Malted in Montreal, Swami's on. Hey, what's up, buddy? 
Welcome to the show. You did an excellent job on the blend challenge. Uh, I'm sure people will look forward to seeing you on live stream tomorrow talking about your blends. We already talked a little bit about the um, about the challenge. We didn't give anything away, but we did uh, we did mention it. So that's something fun for people to do tomorrow where they can see six different channels all trying to talk at the same time. That should be interesting. Yeah, I don't know if I'll be able to make it. I, I might have to work, which is too bad. No, oh, well. Life. Life gets in the way of trying to drink whiskey every day. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, I had to had to make a hamburger while the live stream was going on tonight. <laughs> like, you, you got priorities, right? Yeah, exactly. So what are you going to drink now? Um, if you're just joining the show, we did a um, – Trenny did a lineup of the Aaron malt that Jordy Mosky provided to us in samples. Um, we spent about an hour doing that, and we are now just in the freestyle portion of the show. We are just bullshitting about coins and other stuff that's going on. And, uh, yeah, so you're into the, the dregs of the show here. So, <laughs> Well, in reality, we're already almost an hour and a half deep, so that's not that bad. That's true. That's true. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm going to just give an overall analysis of the Aaron malt. It kind of took me by surprise because I've, you know, we've had a couple, not many, but the one you're sipping on and then, uh, the Amarone cask and they're both good, but they weren't something that really blew my mind. Some of these ones here are blowing my mind. Like I'm really loving the, uh, 21st anniversary edition and on second taste of it there's some definite like chocolate notes in there as well which is kind of exciting you don't always find that people are talking about samson on here right now trenny is samson around how do we know about samson again because in the most recent video samson was clawing the shit out of my leg maybe if i snap him he usually comes to some snaps some good well rhythm snaps mm. but or he's outside he's on the prowl yeah trenny trenny's cat has like those bleeding eyes those like disgusting like mucky bleeding eyes constantly he's a vampire at night That's why. <laughs> he's, he's low maintenance though right like he just lives his own life right you just leave the window open and he just just does whatever the hell he wants he's like a house plant that loves you back <laughs> that occasionally claws me to shit at like three in the morning, but whatever. Jeremy Holder, Jeremy Holder, shutting her down. So, um, thanks for, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. We got a couple of people tuning in now. It looks like Whiskey Ace is saying, "Hey, everybody!" So Whiskey Ace is just showing up. Uh, Malted in Montreal is just showing up. So, um, so yeah, it's good. You know, people kind of come and go. Like you see your numbers on live stream, right? And you're like, oh, there's 30 people watching. And then after two hours, it's like 220 views. And it's like, holy shit, that's a lot of people that like bounced in and bounced out over a two hour period, which is... Neckpour's which is, here right now too. What's that? Neckpour's with us. No, yeah, Neckpour tuned in a little while ago. I saw okay. I saw the name, but I failed to, um, to recognize him. So sorry about that. Also, we have uh, and Ker Mohan says, hi, C, hug for you. Thank you. Thank you for the hug. How about a little fist pump? Boom. <laughs> I'm not a hugger. I'm not a hugger. Boom. <laughs> um, what else we got going on here? Wow. Lucky Trevor McKim McKinvin. He says, giddy up, boys. I'm heading to Isla for the fam jammer visit to Scotland. Going to uh, beg Lafroy, etc. Um, what she wants? Hmm. Interesting. I'd like to try some uh, kill homing, personally. Yeah. Okay. Again. Hold on. Sorry. Some really nice drams here. What else you got kicking around the house tonight? Mm, well, I mean, I have a few, but I also have like 
Oh, no, I'm getting close to being done all of these, which is good. You're going to be feeling good. Drinking? Are you still on your, your first errand? I poured a real big one, but yeah. Um, hey, you said you woke up at like 3 in the morning this morning. Are you crashing yet? I'm crashing pretty good, yeah. I uh, <laughs> I was going to try to come home and have a nap and everything, but my parents were at uh, my the Shawnigan spot, so I went and hung out there for a bit and had like a couple of beers and a puff. Oh, dang. And, uh, that just set me feeling really good, so couldn't, couldn't shut it down, you know? Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, but you'll you'll crash hard after this. That's for damn sure. Oh yeah, I sure hope I fucking sleep through the night. Anyway, if you guys haven't yet, go to YouTube.com and uh, subscribe to Listening Party. Yeah, you have to look. You have to search for because there's too many things of like um, what's his name? Uh, like Drake Listening Party. Yeah, it's you like you have it's, to search for this guy right here. This is the symbol of the band, and it will be like in a circle as the thumbnail. That's Listening Party. Check out our tracks if you're interested. If you're not, don't worry about it. But uh, the reason we're promoting it a little bit more right now is because. Um, me and Lindy, the other guy in the band, we are writing a new album set to be released for 2020. And all of our music is going to be available at the end of this month on like iTunes and Apple Music and Spotify and all the, the music platforms. So I hopefully, we're just trying to promote it to some of our people. You guys are such a huge support in other ways. So maybe I'm sure, you know, music's pretty universal. Hopefully you can get into it. And and I had to step in and actually make you guys a YouTube channel because your only social media you had going was MySpace. So uh, you know, they needed they needed some help. So I made them a Twitter and uh, and a YouTube and um, a bunch of other stuff to get get them get them out there. So their your, their content is ten years old, but uh, if you can build up a you know a viewer base over the next year before your album comes out, well then you'll actually have some people to see that album. Yeah, it's, it's embarrassing that you, what you did in five days was more than we did in 10 years. Sure, we released some albums and stuff and went on tour and whatever, but who cares if nobody's around to hear it, <laughs> you know? Do you think that you'll, um, you'll do some shows before, like in advance of the, the album coming out? Like you could, obviously build a following by like getting out there and doing some more shows too. Sure. Right? Yeah. I think we'll, we'll definitely, cause a lot of the time, like it's one thing to like practice songs and like go in the studio and record them, but it's a whole other thing to see how people react to them. So sometimes that changes a bit of the dynamic of how long an intro is or whatever it might be. Cause people might like certain aspects of it. So we, I think we got to play at least two or three shows before we actually go and record the record. But the cool thing is that it's actually real music where you actually play real instruments. It's not like just some synthesized bullshit that you got off GarageBand. Yeah, exactly. It's all real instruments and real singing. And actually, this record, we're really trying to um, kind of get back to the roots of what we did originally, which is lots and lots of percussion, lots and lots of uh, vocals, and uh, kind of minimalistic. Uh, guitar playing structures and things like that. No, no, no big wailing guitar solos, just like songs for the sakes of being good songs. That's kind of how I'm looking at it anyways. But didn't Lindy used to play the drums and they were like garbage cans flipped over or something like that or like? Yeah, and they sounded amazing. A five gallon, <laughs> a five gallon drum, drum played with a maraca is so huge sounding. It's crazy. I remember seeing that and I was like, is he actually going to play that? Is that like an instrument or are they putting garbage in that later? Yeah, no. Well, it, it also helps carrying some of our garbage. So <laughs> we're like the world's first like recycle band. You well, know? Isn't it like Blue Man Group or some somebody that plays like fucking flipped over Rubbermaids or is that just a commercial? Uh, probably Blue Man Group does it. Yeah. But anyway, um, <laughs> Whiskey Ace, synth haters. <laughs> Yeah, I, I love a good synth once in a while. That's why we cover so much '80s music. Um, it is. Yeah, and the, the Trendy and C theme song is well. No, the Trendy and C theme song was um, was just you doing guitar, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, we get we've offended Jason Coates because he's a synth maker. Well, we didn't mean it like that. We 
we meant it from the synth angle of like garage band like canned beats and stuff like that you yeah actually synth, we we definitely use synths in our in our music for sure like there's nothing wrong with it Especially no what I, was, what I was trying to say is it's actually live real you actually play instruments it's oh, not yeah. a pre yeah, and, and and we use like the juno six which which uh he'll know what we're talking about and uh what else do we have there's a couple well, of different keyboards that are fucking rad. What was that thing that you have that's made out of a, a tank metal or something like that? Oh, that's a pedal. I have a, the old school Big Muff distortion pedal, which is like made out of old Russian tank parts. And it's really big. It's green, like Soviet green. <laughs> I guess Soviet's more red, isn't it? Anyways, but like green tank parts, big knob in the middle that you stomp on, and then just one... Uh, no, two uh, tone and volume things, and it comes in like a big wooden box. It's like about this fucking big to carry around with you. So, but they're pretty cool. I think Whiskey Ace and um, Jason Coates have forgiven us after my backpedaling, uh, my quick, my quick backpedal. You can't say anything on the internet without catching some shit, right? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> There's somebody into into something. There's there's yeah. There's people everywhere that are into something, right? So it's like um, it's pretty cool, actually, what Jason Coates does and what he makes, and like that's like a serious skill, right? Oh yeah, big time. That's huge. Okay, so whiskey. Um, I gotta switch it up here. I know it's we're, we've hit the ten o'clock hour, which is uh, oh well, that's only an hour and a half. No, I know we're doing okay. I thought we got going at eight o'clock, but it was eight thirty. So we're only at an hour and a half. We're doing good. I'm putting some of these away. I'm gonna get into some stuff that we recently opened here uh, at your house. Then I'm thinking about doing. Oh, oh, the boxes. The boxes are over there. Ugh, I'm not gonna drink any of that Indian stuff. No, it's terrible. <laughs> I mean, it's really good. You guys should buy it. <laughs> well, we're going to do some more. We did Indian, hashtag Indian summer last year where we reviewed all Indian whiskeys like all summer long. And we got like six views all summer. And uh, it turns out Indian summer is not the same type of Indian as the whiskey that we were reviewing. So caught some shit for that too. But um yeah, we've got a few Indian whiskey videos coming out. So uh, the reality of it is India is a big market. So you can actually eventually get some views off your Indian whiskey videos. I mean, uh, one of our best performing videos right now is the After Dark Indian whiskey. And it's like a really shitty Indian blend. And that video is getting like just thousands of views right now. And it's just... I don't know what it has. It has like ten or twenty thousand views on it, I guess. And it just start. It's just kept climbing. And I guess the um, the Indian the Indian um, uh, market found it and started watching it, and it just kind of took off. So yeah, so we're doing going to do a few more Indian whiskey videos and become the the gurus of of shitty blended Indian malts and. Uh, We'll know all there is to know about them. And we just filmed three videos and you know, there are some surprises in there. Some of them are not too bad, but it's like, um, it's like blended scotch. And so just to clarify, we're not talking about Am Root and Paul John here. We're talking about After Dark and Royal Challenge and Signature and whatever that aqua blue one is, but there's Antiquity Blue. Um, they have to be measured on a different scale, right? Like you don't measure a blended scotch against a single malt scotch because they're just really not comparable. It's the same thing. You don't measure an Indian malt versus. Sorry to interrupt, but uh, Jordy Mosky is signing off for the night. So thank you, Jordy. This would not have been possible without you. So amazing. I've had a great night. I'm I'm really glad to taste this without C actually because he did this with the. Uh, Peter White sample night, but yeah, this is so good. So thank you for joining us. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, and we uh, shall return the favor, and hopefully we will see you, if not before, at the next Whiskey Fest. Yeah. 
Hey, uh, Red Dragon's on here, and he was talking about enjoying the music, but he just said, and by he, I shouldn't say he, Red Dragon could be female. But anyway, actually more music and more American Rye. Thanks, you guys are the best. Wow. Um, Love that. We have a shit ton of American Rye, um, even just right here on this shelf that we need to review. And I might be, I might do like a focus on my, um, on my solo reviews because like we have wild turkey rye that we haven't done. We've got, and it's not like these are exceptional ryes, but um, we've got old Overholt that we haven't done. I've got um, Knob Creek rye that we haven't done. Um, that's just to name a few that I can see right in front of me here. Plus, we have every intention of getting bullet rye because bullet rye is really freaking good for the price. Um, we also have the other ones. Uh, anyway, we have a bunch of them. We have a bunch of American rye. So, you know, at some point we're going to, we're going to hit that up. Um, we're going to hit it hard, hit the American rye and, uh, your wish will will come true. Um, and isn't the Red Dragon the name of Will Ferrell's car in um, uh, old school? Just I don't know. It just might be on the Red Dragon over here. <laughs> yeah, but it's also isn't it like the name of like? Oh, it might be wrong, but like the the Hannibal Lecter uh, <laughs> movie, Red Dragon or something. I don't know. That was the girl with the dragon tattoo. Yeah, I think there's a red dragon that's something to do with Hannibal Lecter. But anyway. Richie Z's shutting her down too. Have a good night, Richie Z. Um Yeah, we're we're dwindling in numbers. We've got twenty here, but what were we what were we just about to do? Oh, I was gonna try something from that we opened on the weekend, but I was looking for the box. Oh, I could try some grain wet sky. <laughs> yeah, you should. I'm uh currently finishing my uh Aaron malt. Uh, adventure off with the sherry cask one. This is just so good. Really good. I think we tried all of these ones when we were doing the live last Friday when we did the, or Saturday when we did the impromptu live, but I've got, I've got the, the Glenn Fittick um, project uh, XX which we got from Christine Lowe's and then um, we've got some bear face. I might try some bear face too. Getting to that time of night where it's like Canadian whiskey seems good. Where is it? I just had that sip again and man, the tobacco on the end of this is fucking amazing. Which one is that? The sherry cask. Mm. It is the, the 1968. It's not, uh, you know, the, Warehouse 1968, single cask, sherry bottling. So good. Molten Montreal shutting her down. See you later, Swami. Um, did you see Jason Coates' comment, Trini? Just left a comment that's, I think, musical. He wants to release a modular version of the SH09 filter next. I'm guessing that's a music thing. Oh, it definitely is, but I don't know my <laughs> my uh, my gear. I'm not as much of a gearhead as some people. Uh, and the gear stuff that I'm really into is like specifically Fender guitars. Love Fender guitars. I've got. I just recently bought a Fender Jaguar with two uh, humbucker pickups in it. I, I think I just get it just to show you guys. It's beautiful. Okay. <laughs> and that'll make more sense to some people than others. So, yeah, this is the uh, Fender Jaguar, two humbucker pickups in it. It's got what's kind of cool is this switch here is bri uh, bridge and then neck pickups and then these rollers. I, I, too much glare here, but if you roll this back all the way, it turns it into a single coil. Same with here, turns this into a single coil. So that's cool. 
So how many guitars are you up to now these days? I think seven. Anyway, this is a guitar I'm super in love with, and I love the the uh, tortoise shell pick guard. Can't really see it in this light, but. And so, some information that I learned from you, I'm gonna re regurgitate, which was that you you taught me that the Jaguar was not that popular until Kurt Cobain used it. Pretty much, I mean, Jaguar and like those are. So there's a Jaguar, a Mustang, and a Jazzmaster, and they're considered offset guitars because the body isn't just perfectly round. It like kind of goes out here and comes in here and does different things. Anyways, they were originally designed for jazz players. Jazz musicians hated them, and a lot of like the 60s surf rock guys started using them. Um, like Dick Dale, like da -da 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 -da. Anyway. Uh, and then they didn't really take off or do anything. So they were in pawn shops all the time for really, really cheap, like 30 to $60. And people like Kurt Cobain and like Jay Massis from Dinosaur Jr. And all these people that were kind of a part of the early grunge movement would buy up these guitars because they were super cheap. And then now because of them getting super famous, like that, Jaguar there cost me a decent chunk of change, even though, you know, 30 years ago it would have been probably about $30. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Only takes, only takes a couple of uh, popular people to, it's kind of like whiskey, you know, like if you have the right person say that it's really good, you know, uh, all of a sudden it becomes harder to find and the price goes up, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. uh, you know, Jim Murray still has that power, right? Where all he has to say is that something's the whiskey of the year. Or, I mean, what was the award that um, Henry McKenna Bourbon won this year? And now it was like, this is just a, a pedestrian bourbon. Like, it was good. It was always good. But it was always readily available. And then it wins, like, best bourbon in the world. And you can't find it anymore. And if you want to buy it, you got to buy it on secondary market for twice as much, right? It's like guess that's just the way of the world, right? Yeah, it's kind of unfortunate, though, because, well, it's not unfortunate. It's just, I guess, if you have a way to predict these things a little bit more than others, then then all the power to you. Right, of course. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, well, I have an empty glass here. Yeah. Um, those, those. Have you seen these coins, Trenny? Have you oh, seen these amazing. coins? Amazing. I haven't even looked at what we're doing on our uh, live feed right now. Okay, we're, we're dwindling a bit. I'm having some of this bare face. So I kind of feel like a Canadian whiskey. I don't know if I have any, though. Yeah, this is the bare face Canadian whiskey, seven years old. And it is... It says right on it that it's sourced. Um, <laughs> and it says, Our bold triple oak signature release is a single grain whiskey aged seven years in ex bourbon barrels on the shores of the Georgian Bay in Ontario, then finished in the Okanagan Valley in British Columbia in tight grain French oak red wine barrels for dried fruit and chestnut notes, and finally with Hungarian oak to deliver a unique spice finish. So, um, sourced whiskey, but really, really well done on the finishing. Um, I mean, it smells like a like a corn whiskey, but it has just like that kick from the red wine cask, you know, like Wayne Gretzky tried to do the same thing, but this is done much better. But it does have, my tasting note on this one was blown out birthday candles. Like it, it has this like, kind of like smoky, waxy kind of, um, thing to it that actually works really well and it's nice and sweet too because it's a, a Canadian corn whiskey so <clears throat> yeah this bare face one it's like right now it's 39 bucks where we are definitely worth a definitely worth a shot at 39 bucks especially if you can find it cheaper somewhere else so um it's one that you know these whiskeys that you can find around 30 bucks I mean all day long you should always try those ones because What's the worst case? Being out 30 bucks is not the worst thing in the world, but you might 
you might stumble onto one that is fantastic. I mean, like for us, that was Naked Grouse last year, right? Yeah, yeah. totally. A 30 Naked something. Grouse for sure. And yeah. both found it in the Whiskey Fest. Yeah, exactly. Both discovered at Whiskey Fest. So I'm going to uh, actually crack into a beer. I've got Red Arrow's old style lager. Don't usually like lagers that much, but man. This is a great lager. I'm sure we've talked about it a lot. Um, one thing that I've noticed lately is, as you all know, I went on a trip to, to uh, Indonesia, and they drink Bintang beer, which is like a Pilsner, really, really light. And ever since I've been back, I've been having a hard time stomaching some of these IPAs, which I was super into before. And now I kind of just like want something light. So I'm going to... If only I had a Trini and C bottle opener. But oh, you just need one of these. One of these. Oh, those look sweet. Oh, it is. It is. It is. Wait till people are going to start posting them once I get them shipped out. People are going to be posting pictures, and hopefully they'll be popping bottles and everything will go well for them. But, uh, yeah, they're heavy enough that they won't bend when you, uh, when you open a bottle, but they're also not, like, outrageously heavy. So, no, they're... They're better. They're they're actually better than I was a little bit nervous about what these things were going to look like and and how they were going to perform. But uh, they've definitely exceeded my expectations. So, so you know what? I do have a bottle opener that is the next best thing. I've got a Jim Beam bottle opener. There you go. So that should do the trick. Oh, oh it's barely doing anything. Oh, there we go. That works. Still works. If I'm not mistaken, you have a uh, Sleemans behind you. Yeah, it's warming up as we speak. Well, maybe throw it in the fridge a bit. So I'm going to have this, and what I find goes well with beer is a dram of whiskey. And when you're in Scotland, they rarely offer you a beer without a dram. So I think I'm going to – and a lot of the time it's in these style glasses too. So I'm going to grab myself a dram. In fact, some of our uh, whiskey blending experiment, I'm going to grab one from here. I'm not going to say anything about them. I'm going to grab one. I don't even know which one this is, actually. Good, because it's a blind tasting. <laughs> this one's by Sipper Social Club. You better save some just in case you do end up on the live stream tomorrow. Yeah, I got a bit here. Right. Okay. Jason Coates says, that was like how people try to do simple things in infomercials. Yes, Jason. You should look forward to the Trendy NC Challenge Coin infomercial. It is coming. I promise you. We've discussed it. Especially now that we uh, actually have the coins. Yeah, exactly. Do you struggle to open bottles? Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> exactly. Okay, I'm going to try some of this beer. Oh, man. That is just so crushable right now. It's so hot out. Right now it's 24 degrees. I'm sorry, the rest of Canada, but it's really, really nice where we live right now. We actually had to go through the painstaking process of shoveling cherry blossom leaves and <laughs> we just had a cherry blossom drift go through our streets <laughs> just brutal yes and it did snow one time this year so that and that was brutal well it's actually funny i heard on cbc radio today um that due to extreme weather events <laughs> so for us that's getting a temperature below like two degree minus two degrees mm -hmm. um and then due to last year's uh drought because we always in bc we're always on water restrictions in the summer but because of that those two simple things like a shit ton of trees are dying in our forests which is just creating more like kindling for the fires that are inevitably inevitably going to happen this summer but don't you love the fact that like we live in a rainforest, literally, and it's pissing with rain 70% of the time here, 
and then we end up in a a, a water restriction drought yeah. every summer. It's like, can we not just collect some more of that rain? I know. I, well, exactly. Shouldn't we? Like uh, where I live, the Lake Cowichan is, they talk about raising the weir or lowering the weir every summer like it's some big fucking thing. Just do what needs to be done so we have enough drinking water and we can water our vegetables. <laughs> but, you know what? And the flip side, the funny thing of that is that when I lived in Arizona, where if you're not an idiot, you know that it's like very hot and very dry. It's basically the desert. No watering restrictions. Like you're just this is yeah. like people watering their patch of dirt you have people washing cars people's sprinklers are broken and just spraying water everywhere all the time it was just like fucking use all the water it's coming from colorado anyway just take it all like it's like how come i live in a rainforest and i have to have water restrictions but when i lived in the desert you could piss away all the water you wanted it was like yeah it, it is kind of ironic i guess like the colorado rivers pretty fucking huge <laughs> so maybe i guess that's part partly it but it just seems wasteful <laughs> it, it, oh, totally i but it's and and on the opposite end like what you're talking about here like mo like we celebrate sunny days because we get so much fucking rain all year round like how how is it possible that the lakes don't fill up enough that we can't you know use that or whatever i don't know like even uh, the Cowichan River, they have to get the salmon coming from the ocean, put them in trucks and ship them, like drive them up to the top of the river to release them because the river's drying out in the summer. It's crazy. <laughs> Catch an Uber. Yeah. Um, I made a mistake and I didn't have enough clean glasses, so I have to drink from one of these fucking Norlin glasses. Hey, so a couple of different things here. Uh, Kilojolt says 24. What the fuck? I was shoveling snow this week. <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, um, Whiskey Ace just switched to Heaven Hill six year old. I wish we could get a hold of something like that. Is that uh, the one that's discontinued now? I'm not sure. Yeah. And then Jason Coates uh, just started some fighting words with you. Arizona is just dumb. But that's just, that's a totally different discussion. <laughs> well, it definitely has its dumbness, but I, I did love it. Yeah. I loved it, but there's definitely some, there's some dumbness there. <laughs> um, and then Anthony, I can never pronounce your last name, but Naomi. Anyways, he says, there's got to be so much water in Canada. And actually, that is very true. Canada has the most fresh drinking water of any country on the planet, I think but we have like thousands and thousands of lakes. Well, that just means that we will have the next war here and we'll all be murdered for our water. Oh, for sure. For sure. Anyway, whatever. We're, we're getting too political here. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. We just got real political on Trenny and C. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about anything serious on this channel. But in a way, like, water, that's kind of a big one. That's not political. That's, like, just purely survival. Not, not just humans, but ev think about this. Every creature on Earth needs water. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. kind of important. Pretty important. Anyway. I just poured the... Um, uh, <laughs> we're drinking the opposite, really. Yeah, yeah, we're just yeah, we're drying ourselves out too. I'm drinking a 48% water uh, beverage. Hmm. Yeah, whiskey ace says I heard the bottle in Bond Heaven Hill was discontinued. That's the one I was talking about. I'm not sure if that's what he's drinking, but. And Anthony Benom says that you did pronounce it right. Now I can't remember how you pronounced it. Yeah, and I wonder if I just did it wrong. No, man. <laughs> I can't remember. Um, cool. So what are you drinking again, Sorry, You're drinking Bareface right now? No, I had the Bareface, and now I'm having the Four Roses. Oh, interesting. 
This uh, I've had recently some of these Red Arrow lagers actually this weekend with you where I wasn't super into it. This one, however, is tasting delicious. Yeah, it's very batch specific, right? Of that uh, like kind of weirdly grainy yeasty thing going on. I love it. Yeah, it's like almost salty when it's good. And actually, it's like slightly cloudy too. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. The unfiltered stuff is good. Yeah. Well, I think um, I think we've said all that we are gonna say tonight, and I think we've pretty much we we may have finally run out of um, of things to talk about here. So, and we're we're closing in on the two hour mark, which is uh, which is plenty plenty from us, I think. Oh yeah, definitely. And uh, all we got to say is uh, check out these Trending Z Challenge coins, eh? <laughs> yeah, for sure. If you don't have them, again, tell the people how to buy them because these are, you know, these are going to be col huge collector's items one day. We're going we're gonna to upsell these like crazy. Oh, yeah. Then this is, look, laser etched numbers on the back. You see that? It says small batch limited release of 100. And it opens bottles. Anyway, um, all you got to do. It's got a sniff hole. And it's got a sniff hole. You put it right over the glass and you sniff right through there. It's perfect. All you got to do, go to PayPal and send $20 to trendync at gmail.com. And we will ship out a coin to you. On that note, we appreciate everyone's support. Just watching the show is support. So thanks so much. You guys are awesome. We had a good time tonight. And uh, any parting words there, Trenny? No, that's pretty much sums it up. Thank you for joining us. As always, that's the biggest thing is that we'd be just talking to each other drinking if it weren't for you guys. So thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, and we will see you. Well, we will see our patrons in two weeks, but you know, I'm sure we will get together and actually be in the same room and do a live stream for our regular patrons. We we like to do these Easter egg Patreon video or uh, live stream videos. So thank you for joining us. We will be back again really really soon, and our next video comes out. What? Uh, well, we kind of used up our Thursday video today. Oh, right. It won't be on a Thursday, but we'll have an unboxing on Saturday. Perfect. Okay, well, thank you for joining us again for a little bit more upsell. All 17 of you watching right now, go to youtube.com, listening party. Look for this logo of this little dancing guy right here. And subscribe. It would really help us out. That's all I got to say. Thank you, guys.